That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Roll Dolls Matilda the Musical. That's a sexy name. Yes, yeah, sexy. I love Roll Doll though. Uh, near and dear to my heart as a, when I was a kid. But uh, this is the third film directed by Matthew Warkus, which is an adaptation of his uh, 2011 musicalization of this material from 2011. Uh, it premiered at the BFI London Film Festival. Netflix released it theatrically December 9th, and it came out on their streaming platform December 25th, 2022. Oh, so we're tardy to the party. We are. Well, we were ill when this screened uh, earlier in December. <laughs> we were ill. Uh, That's true. What are the director's other films? Uh, his first film is a 1999 indie called Simpatico, uh, which I uh, have vibrant memories of that trailer uh, and Sharon Stone's face on the poster. Oh. And uh, he directed Pride in 2014, which we did see, uh, which is about uh, the LGBT. Q plus community coming together to uh, help the miners during the 1984 strike. You remember what? that film? Oh, yes, I do, actually. In the UK. Uh, and uh, this is his third film. I didn't really care for this, but I don't, maybe it's not for me. Okay, the, the, no, the book, Roald Dahl's 1988 book, circa 1992, was very near and dear to my heart uh, for various reasons. And there's a 1996 film version that Danny DeVito directed. Which I remember, I probably, by the time I saw that, I probably felt too old for the material. But, I, you know, there's a timelessness to Roald Dahl that I think is kind of ruined, bludgeoned to death, in fact, by adding a bunch of uh, musical numbers that, to me, didn't really add anything to it. And maybe that served this material better on stage, but as a film, it felt bloated at two hours, and uh, I didn't care for any of these songs. Well, I didn't know. I, I didn't read the book as a kid. I didn't watch the 90s movie, so I didn't know anything about Matilda. Uh, and yeah, I definitely... Okay, the basic story is Matilda is this like 10-year-old girl. It appears to be like in the 80s in London, or the UK. She, Her parents don't like her. They don't want her. And then what makes it worse is that the dad wanted a son. So he, so they just don't do anything with this girl. They don't send her to school. She's never been to school. And one day, some representatives, I guess, from... I don't know who these people are. Well, one, one is presumably a social worker we don't see, and the other one is Miss Jennifer Honey, played by Lashana Lynch. Well, I'm confused because the school... Oh, God. The story is complicated to me. There's a lot going on. But Lashana Lynch plays this teacher named Miss Honey, who shows up at Matilda's house with a social worker trying to convince her parents to send her to school. But Miss Honey works at a school run by this lady named Miss Trunchbull, mm -hmm. played by Emma Thompson, mm -hmm. and the school is a nightmare. So I don't know why Miss Honey, who seems to love children, would want to recruit them to go to this awful-ass school. And if that's a social worker, don't they, like, vet these places before? <laughs> I don't know. I'm so confused by it. But poor Matilda ends up going to this school... And this is where things get complicated because the school's like generically awful because Miss Trunchbull, which I think is the best part of the movie, is awful. Mm -hmm. But Matilda is very literate and she wants to write a story. So she has a friend, this lady who runs like a mobile library, and she's telling this lady the story she wants to write, mm -hmm. like piecemeal. But it's also like coming to her in what she calls fizzes. Like, like it, visions. Yeah. The story is about some circus performers who are like a couple, a man and a woman, and the woman's pregnant and their boss forces the woman to perform when she shouldn't be, which causes her to become very badly injured. And after she has her baby, she dies. Mm -hmm. And we find out that that story Matilda's been conjuring, that's the true life story of Miss Honey. Mm -hmm. Miss Honey, Lashana Lynch, her auntie, her step auntie is Miss Trunchbull, Emma Thompson. And that story about the circus performers, those are Miss Honey's parents. So we find out that Emma Thompson's character basically, like, after the mom died, killed the dad so she could take his property and then agreed to take care of Miss Honey. But then when Miss Honey became an adult, she told her, you owe me for everything I ever did for you. It makes her sign a contract and everything. So Miss Honey is stuck working for Miss Trunchbull and Miss Honey lives in squalor. But of course, Matilda obviously has some sort of psychic ability if she could conjure the story. But we also find out she has, like, telekinetic she, powers. She, yep. mm -hmm. So, 
The film ends with a final showdown between Matilda and Miss Trunchbull because she knows that this lady's bad and it forces Miss Trunchbull to like leave the school. In fear. In fear. So Miss Honey takes over and then the school turns into Neverland like, Ranch. Neverland Ranch because it's like like a, a, a full on like carnival circus thing. Yeah, it's like is this educational person? The end. And it becomes called the Crunchum Hall becomes the big the big school of fun or whatever. The opening line of the movie, like this quote that pops up, says, to change the world, it takes a little genius. Are they talking about Matilda? Yes. Because I didn't think she was that... <laughs> yes, Matilda. Uh, again, I think that's where this kind of... The material under the weight of this musical is absolutely crushed. Matilda's very literate. Like, I mean, there's one scene where Miss Honey asks her, what books have you read this week? And she runs off a list that's just obnoxious. You mean literary? Huh? Literary? Literate. Doesn't literate mean, like, very well read? Matilda's very well read for a little kid and there's a point where she's in front of the classroom and recounts all the books she's read for the week and then she even solves like a complicated equation on the blackboard uh, where apparently adults are th th also going to school at, at this night point? I don't understand the school and but but then Matilda doesn't seem very like aware of her surroundings and aware of how like life works so I'm very confused by this little girl I wasn't super impressed by her she doesn't really seem to have developed the kind of survival skills you would need at home uh, in the, where her parents despise her because she keeps goading them yeah but but then even like the parents yes they despise her but they're not like vile they just don't give a shit about her like just get out of our way and but they don't abuse her it seems and like she lives in a nice enough house they just have her in the attic but the attic looks like a, a, a room any teenager would want away from the family but anyway um, they're kind of like Harry Potter's guardians. I, and they're played by Andrea Riseborough and Stephen Graham, by the way. Okay, so... Well, we reviewed a couple Andrea Riseborough films. Oh, okay. Well, the opening of the film, I don't know. I didn't care for how the movie looked. The opening is like the hospital scene where the mom gives birth to Matilda. I thought that looked a little crunchy. Probably my biggest issue is the music. Nothing really... Emma Thompson gets Ms. one. Trunchbull is fun, which we can get into, but... I also, maybe, again, it's just me, but hearing small kids sing, is it gets grating after a while. Like, that tone is like, ugh. But yeah, I she, sound like a monster. Well, because, you know, Alicia Weir is starring as Matilda. But it, 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 it sounds like Elvin and the Chipmunks singing uh, after a while. And it, it's, I don't know how uh, much that's supposed to act. You know, when you're seeing a musical, isn't the point of it to, you know... Kind of be swept away by the songs. I yeah. Think. Oh, you don't have to talk about hair, but that opening scene when all the parents, like, so there's, a, like, in the hospital, all of the parents looking at the newborn babies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the babies are cute, but all of the parents and their wig game is terrible. Um, well, and I was very confused about the setting, the time period that it's set in as well, because you have Miss Trunchbill up there like Billy Baldwin in Sliver, like in her office watching everybody on, on cameras. cameras, which is, you know, a new addition as well to this material. Uh, but based on the details we get about when people were born or doing things like when she was in the Olympics, I'm like, this must be in the 80s, the late 80s. I think the story's set in the 80s. Um, the narrative of, like, this main character, Matilda, telling a story piecemeal throughout the film about these circus performers who ultimately end up being Miss Honey and Miss Trunchbull is such a weird approach because it's like, I didn't find Matilda that captivating as a character. And then throughout the entire film, I mean, the basic story is really about, is not about Matilda. So I just... It wasn't very compelling to hear her tell the story, which we get a lot of. And then once we find out, oh, it's about Miss Honey, then I was really frustrated because Miss Honey... But the, the book, from what I recall 30 plus years ago, didn't feel that way to me. Reading. Sure. I mean, I'm just going off what I saw last night on the TV screen, but I, I, I just didn't... I needed to understand how Miss Honey, who's like an educated woman is tied to Miss Trunchbull off a, like a letter she signed saying that I agree to pay you for raising me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Tom Absolutely Hanks. Tom not. Hanks and Elvis. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's yeah. not on your credit karma, girl. You, I, I need to better understand why she felt like she could not leave. <laughs> well, there needs to be some kind of uh, 
servitude towards her that we felt or this codependency that she right. felt for this this guardian that she had and why. Because uh, it just makes Miss Honey seem pathetic. And I like Lashana Lynch. And it's fun seeing her play a different kind of role from what I know her from. Sure. But... So, I, so she's very likable on screen, but that character was so frustrating to me. Agreed. Um, but then I should be positive. So I think Emma Thompson in this role is so good. First of all, she looks like Alice the Goon from Popeye. I thought she looked a little also like Edie Falco in Avatar The Way of Water. I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just say, I think the better story should have focused on Miss Trunchbull. And her running the school being a tyrant and all the funny things that, well, funny because she's being awful. And then, you know, then you have this character, Matilda, who kind of like fights back and then either shows her the way to be a good person or runs her off so they can turn the school into a nice place. I feel like that would have been such a simple, fun way because the only time I enjoyed the movie was when Emma Thompson was on screen. Agreed. But also, if we're going to be revisiting material that's been done uh, before, I, I don't know why you wouldn't try a different entry point into right. it to begin with. But yeah, she is the more interesting character, but we're, we've also kind of reverted to this kind of uh, way of storytelling where the villains always have to uh, have a comeuppance, where they're not allowed to have... Sure. You know, it's just like, look at what happened to the origin stories of Maleficent or even Cruella where we we de-villainize them. So if you're going to have somebody like Miss Trunchbull doing as terrible of things as she's doing, she has to be punished uh, the, the way she is. So they wouldn't ever tell this story, at least in the period we're living in, uh, from her. There's a scene where Miss Trunchbull makes a kid eat an entire chocolate cake and you said in the book it was very memorable. Yeah. In the film, it Bruce was... Bruce Bob Trotter. It was not... I, I, I thought for sure the little boy was going to explode from eating the cake, but he just eats it. But I did think it was, again, Emma Thompson's so cute at this, well, cute, funny, because the little boy burps. Mm -hmm. uh, or it, but She knows who did it because the boy burps the chocolate cake, and you see the burp floating in the air. And then when it hits her face, she, like, tastes it. Mm -hmm. I thought her, like, physical acting in this movie was very, very good. And it's, uh, what's funny is she remembers, she, there's a flashback to when she won her, uh, the Olympics for th hammer throwing. Uh, and she looks very, her body, her stature is very much the same as when we see her now. But in the story being told by Matilda, it's played by a completely different woman who looks the exact opposite. Obviously, is a red herring to fool the audience. But, the th this feels toothless because the inherent violence, even as a kid, in the fear and anxiety uh, that I related to as a kid, uh, is is completely evaporated uh, from what ostensibly is a Dickens this Dickensian boarding school. This is like Oliver Twist. Well, and yeah, also like, this because it did feel like a boarding school. I was so confused that like these kids only go there during the day and go home at night, and that there are adults who use the school at night, and like how are all these parents of all these kids not like like these kids must be telling their parents that it's a nightmare there. We do hear that like Miss Trunchbull School is like the most strict, and it might be for like misbehaving children. Again, but, though, what doesn't make sense is why is Miss Honey the one rec doing the actual recruiting, uh, and I need to understand, were there other available options for children in this area? I, I mean, I'm just asking these questions. Like, it doesn't matter. This is the story. But yeah, I just kept thinking, like, well, how is this a thing? But there's another scene where Miss Trunchbull gets, like, a lizard in her underwear. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they call them knickers. Mm -hmm. And I think knickers is such an awkward word. It is. I would yeah. definitely find another word. <laughs> Well, that. I know it's appropriate to the to the, and well, the, region, the culture, yeah. But it's such an awkward word. Um, it's like, what is it, Queen Latifah and Kevin Bacon in uh, Beauty Shop? Oh, moniker. She's like, what did you call? <laughs> so, then at the end, when there's this showdown between Matilda and Miss Trunchbull, Matilda's using her telekinetic powers to scare Miss Trunchbull, but she's not scared. Uh, but there is a moment when she threatens to throw all the kids into the chokey, which is like solitaire. And as far as the kids know, there's only one chokey. So she takes one student and then the other students stand up and say, well, then you have to throw us in the chokey too. And then she's like, well, I got something for your ass. And she built a chokey for each student. I just thought that was so much fun. If the movie would have been Miss Trunchbull pulling stunts like that, like th th this movie would have been a favorite. I just, again, if you're going to make something, if you're going to 
take previously existing material and just you know spackle musical numbers on it they need to be memorable my I, last I, my last note is i did watch the trailer some time ago because i think it was like on tiktok someone was making fun of the final scene of the movie which is all the kids dancing uh -huh. once the school turns into the big friendly school mm -hmm. and i don't know who choreographed this but they those kids were going off it, to the point where it looks kind of silly because a these kids are going so hard they're great dancers but also their dancing doesn't match the song that they're singing no it sure it sure does not <laughs> so it, it's very strange well but it feels manic and it does. uh disturbing that, that's probably the most disturbing scene in the film actually if you think about it <laughs> like, like what is it, happening it made me the most uncomfortable but it, but again i wanted i, I think your idea about if you're approaching this from the Trunchbull perspective and how she's maybe... Because she hates children so much. You're like, what? why are you in this line of work? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, why do you teach children if you hate them so much? And speaking of another word that makes me uncomfortable is maggots because it sounds like a very popular F-slur. Uh, Matt Damon. <laughs> that she uh, calls all the children. But is she trying to get more is she trying to add to her student body is she like is she eating them is she, like what <laughs> is she like angelica houston and daddy daycare she want to be the number one uh recruiter of children well it feels like understand. the witches except there's no purpose for the kid like yeah speaking of angelica houston yeah. and roald Dahl, who wrote yeah, that story I but again i i think dismant and i know that uh you know roald Dahl said some things that i think a lot of them were taken out of context because he's anti-israel and a lot of his uh, a lot of things that he said have been construed as anti-Semitic. Uh, and he also, yeah, there, there are a lot of interesting things in his legacy that I think a lot of people would now consider problematic. But I think he was a fantastic writer. And I, I think as a, no, he was. And as, as a writer of children's stories, I think, uh, in a way that we are too uncomfortable to correctly uh, present in a way that he intended them actually as well uh, he also wrote a lot of dirty uh, adult things <laughs> well let's be done with this review what would you give it two i would give it two out of five it wasn't for me anything else no hit the thanks button listen to our podcast bye